was just considering the, the way that England have played and that we've got so many guys without uh, test experience in England. What kind of cricket do you want them to play? And, and I mean, have you given it a name or a style, or can you describe it to us? Uh, no, I don't think we've given it a name. Um, I know that they've given it a name over here. But uh, we, we believe that we've been playing a nice brand of cricket. Um, we've had some tight series where we've come out on top um, of late. Um, and, and nothing sort of changes for us. We've got our processes that we will go through uh, in order to, to try to get the results going our way. Um, I've always said that we, we like to be nice and smart. We want to play aggressive cricket, but you've got to be smart with regards to that as well. Um, and nothing will change for us. Um, you know, I know there's, this is an England versus South Africa um, series and there's always a lot of hype in the media. There's a lot of things that get said. Um, bottom line is this, this game is between bat and ball and you've got to make smart de decisions at, at certain times of a game. And you know, we, we are focused on, on trying to do that um, from our side. And England will probably do the same. They've got their brand that they want to play, which is, which is perfect. We just, we've got to try and match it on the day and, and try and find ways to, to negate that. Now, going back to 2008, I think it was the last time there was a, as an inexperienced a, an attack and it was Dale and Mornay and I don't know that maybe it was Makaios first time here at Lords as well and they, they all admitted that they had been intimidated by the occasion in the venue and they, and they bowled poorly. What can you do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Yeah, we've, we spoke about it. Um, I think that's the first thing that's moving in the right direction. Um, we've got a a nice environment where we, we're pretty open and honest about certain things, certain emotions, certain feelings that the, the players might be going through. And you know, that's something that we have addressed. It's, I don't see it as something that's a negative. I think it's a, a great environment to play cricket. Coming to the home of cricket, Lords is a special place to play cricket, a great occasion. Uh, this is where, where legends are made. Um, you know, we walk into the change room, you see all the names on the board. There's so many stories around those performances. Um, so it shouldn't be a fear factor. It's just about us as, as coaches and as a coaching staff trying to give guys certain tools to deal with the pressures and emotions that you're going to feel in the morning. Um, you can't hide from that. Um, they're going to be there. It's a great feeling, um, especially if you can overcome that and do well. Um, so yeah, that's, it is something that we've definitely addressed and, and hopefully the guys can, can use the tools that we've provided um, and come out on top. Um, not, not much, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the, the warm-up game that we played down in Canterbury, it was exactly that. It was a warm-up game for us. Um, so we had certain things we wanted to get out of the game. Uh, we believe we got out the game. You know, the result didn't go our way, which you know, is never great losing. Um, but we're not looking too much into, into the way that they play. It's more about focusing on, on what, what we need to do um, to get ready for a test series. So, you know, we lost the first game against the Lions in the one-day stuff as well, and we came out pretty good after that. So hopefully that's a, a good omen for us, and we can, we can change things around. But that, that not getting sucked in, sorry, just following up, that not getting sucked in, was that just for specific game to last week's game, or a more general thing about the, the way that England were playing? No, I think it's, it's a more general thing. I mean, I was asked the question right at the beginning of the tour, you know, what do we think about the way that they're playing? And I actually said, you know, I watched it on TV and it's quite exciting. It's, um, you know, exciting band of cricket. Um, you know, you need, need to have a couple of things that, that are encouraging you to play that way. The conditions, it's been dry here, so, you know, the guys have, have really taken advantage. And you also need to have the players and they believe that they've got the players to play that way. Um, but, yeah, it's, as I said, this is all just talk in the media. Um, you know, come Wednesday, it's about bat and ball and about playing situations smart. Um, that the game sort of gives to you and that's exactly what we're looking to do if we get into a situation where we're on top We hopefully drive that advantage home and if they get on top then hopefully we can try and negate that and, and find a way to to switch uh, switch a momentum Thanks, Charlie. Well, In 2012 you were taken out of the equation in, in an awful fashion um, I understand coaching is a selfless business and that cricketers look ahead not behind but do you come in now as a coach with any kind of hopes to, to, to rekindle what happened for the team in, in 2012? No, not really. Um, I was pretty satisfied with, 
with what I got out of that tour, even though I wasn't on the tour, um, I was pretty well looked after by, by teammates and, and, and the management at that, that stage. So, you know, me moving into a coach is a completely different uh, sort of road for me. Um, and I'm, I'm on a journey with these guys that, you know, over the last two, three years, it's, it's, it's been challenging. Um, but I've really enjoyed it, working with the players. And for me, that's, this is just a part of their journey. Um, coaches come and go, management come and go. These guys will, will outlive, will hopefully outlive coaches and, and probably more coaches to come as well. It's, it's about their journey and I'm just privileged to be a part of that. Mark, when did England say that they can chase down any toes, that they can take wickets in any conditions? Are they right? Oh, if they're saying that, they probably believe that they're right. Um, as I said, this is, it's our job to try and stop them from doing that. Um, and if we can do that with, with whatever style would we want to play, then, then hopefully we can do that. Um, you know, I've, it's not a conversation about me thinking about England. It's a conversation about me talking about what we can get out of our players and uh, prepare them as best we can to, to hopefully you know, be on top of the game rather than behind. I think you only had to be around when the guys arrived and, and walked into the museum. Um, we were very privileged to have a trip through the museum and all the players just staring uh, in awe of, of what was around them. So just watching the players' reaction to walking into Lords, there, there's a lot of passion. Um, the emotions are running high um, in a good way. So I, it's, as a coach, you don't really have to try and get the boys all G'd up for a game like this. I think that that's already there. and. So I think, the, I think the youngsters around here, they want to be here and they want to perform at this ground. They want to be a part of hopefully creating something special um, and becoming legends of the game like a lot of the cricketers in the past have been. Mark, firstly, from, from an injury point of view, do you think Kavisa will be ready to go on, on Wednesday? Um, yeah, I hope so. He's, he's, he's come on well. I think the, the one concern is always maybe his loads. Um, but uh, he seems to have, I mean, he's a, he's a great athlete. Uh, so his body seems to have recovered nicely. He's not feeling too much pain. Uh, he'll have his, probably his final test uh, today to, to find out how he's going. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that, that he pulls through. He's a, he's a massive player for us, uh, as, as we all know. Um, so for him to, to be a part of the, the final 11 will be very special for us. What is the best way to try and counter this, this new start from England? Because it seemed against New Zealand and against India, when the momentum was with England, they seemed really difficult to stop. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you on the day. <laughs> As I said, I mean, we don't know. we've got to be adaptable um, in test cricket, so we, we don't know what conditions are going to be like overhead, uh, you know, underfoot. It's just about finding a way to, to try and stop them, stop the momentum with them, and maybe try to change it. Um, I think our, our fielding is going to be important. Um, as we've seen in the recent past, uh, you know, when you, when you do grab, get opportunities, you've got to take them. I think that's just in general in, 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 in test cricket now, with the introduction of of white ball cricket, uh, T20s especially, batters are scoring all around the ground. Um, and they, they're brave enough to, to take a game on uh, when they see a moment and try to take a game away from the uh, opposition team. So when you do get opportunities, you've got to try to try hang on to them. So, so we'll, we'll be putting a lot of emphasis on that as well. Um, do you, Mark, do you expect England to bowl first if they win the toss, whatever the conditions are? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not privy to their, their conversations. Maybe I'll have a beer with Bears later and ask him what he would like to do. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah, as I said, we, we play the conditions. You know, if we don't know what it's going to be like. Uh, there's a bit of rain around, so we'll have a look at that on the day and make a, make a decision on the morning, as, as they will probably do as well. You, do you think Palmer comes into the equation with his English experience? Absolutely. Do you think he comes into the equation? <laughs> there we go, there's your answer. Cool. We're going to take one more from the floor, just a couple online, and then we're going to look to wrap up the press conference. And then I do just ask with follow ups, uh, we'll just make our way through everyone first before we go to follow ups. Thanks, Bernard. Uh, Buck, can I just ask you, you spoke a little bit about the guys walking into the museum and, and the sense around that. Can you tell us a bit more about that? You know, these are such young players, like who was particularly affected, or, or just what, what have they said, and like, what's the vibe like around this field? No, look, I think it's a, not much is said. I mean, we spoke about K1 
coming to Lords and, and, and the feeling of, of walking through the gates and that emotion of like, you know, you, you, you're playing at the home of cricket. And it is a different feeling uh, when you walk through those gates compared to any other gate in the world. Uh, not to say that any other ground is not as special, but there is a, a, an extra sense of, of the specialness um, when you walk into, into Lords. So the guys walk through the museum. They're, as you say, a lot of the youngsters, guys have been here before, um, are probably like still looking around, still looking at WG Grace's uh, gloves and going, don't know if I could wear those you know, today. But um, yeah, a lot of the youngsters were, were walking around having a look at, at certain things. They put in a nice little um, South African uh, section for us as well. So we've been successful here as well. So hopefully we can look at that and, and their, me their memories hopefully to be created at this, at this venue. So you know, they, would, they would like to be a part of those, those memories created. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's a nice position for, for me as coach to be in. Because as I said, you don't have to you don't have to get the boys worked up for this game. I think naturally they're going to be there. Thanks. We'll go online. Yes, sir. Learn how to fetch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken, it, it was a difficult one because uh, I think the wicket was pretty flat, um, and uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say there was a lot of learning because you know we, from a bowling sense, um, it was quite tough. As I said, you know, we, we, we had certain things that we wanted to try uh, get out of the game and spending time on the feet, having a, a good ball out in the middle. Um, that was something that uh, we, we did achieve. Um, the learnings, we've got quite a few guys who have been playing in county cricket um, that could bring us some good um, advice on, on the way that the, the, the pitchers are playing. So we knew that before the game. I think the, the best thing for us is that we come out of a... Um, off season at the moment, so the guys are all a bit rusty. So just for them to get out in the middle and, and have a bit of cricket, I think was was good. Um, and that's why we weren't too phased about the result because, you know, the, the English line guys are slap bang in the middle of a of a season, and it was always going to be tough for our guys to come over out of a winter, uh, no game time, and and perform uh, straight away. So I think the, we we respect that, and and there certainly was was no panic from our side. Thanks, Ken, Yaha, Amir, and then we're going to round off with Mark. Hi, Mark. Was there any talks of the ECB about the quality of the Duke's ball? There were some problems earlier this uh, summer. I let the players do that that moaning. Um, <laughs> I know that there was some sort of talk about uh, the ball that wasn't swinging or, or something like that. But uh, to be fair, I mean, whatever ball we get, England are going to get, get they're going to get the same ball, and uh, we've got to make a talk, and they're probably thinking the same. So. Are we not reading too much into that? Thanks, Johan. Amir, then Mark. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, Coach, just looking at the bowling attack, um, we've obviously lost one who comes with a lot of experience having played county cricket. Uh, Kakiso's also a doubt. You said that he's undergoing some final fitness tests. Uh, just talk to us about the current bowlers that you do have. Are you happy with the workloads that they've put in? And do you believe that they you know, have the fire within them to you know, put up a fight against the, this um, talented English batting? Yeah, obviously, Duan was, was very unlucky, and it, it was quite sad to, to see him uh, leave the tour. Um, but uh, yeah, we, you, know that, you know what the squad is. Uh, we've got our guys who are, are pretty much in those positions at the moment, and I don't see that changing too much without giving anything away. Um, but yeah, I, th I think we're in a good space as bowlers. Um, and and we, do, we do believe that, that we can pick up 20 wickets in a test match. We've, we've shown in the past against other teams we can, and, and this should be no different. Thanks, Amir. And lastly, Mark. Um, Mark, we've been reading about this heat wave in the UK. They're a little bit skeptical about how a heat wave in the UK really is. But is there any potential impact on, on the pitches there, or on the pitch this week there, because of this heat wave? <laughs> Around the country, I think it, it certainly has played a role. Um, the wickets that we've been to have, have turned quite a bit and they've been quite slow. Um, I mean, I've certainly seen on the golf courses as well that there's, they're very hard and there's not much green grass around. But uh, coming to Lords, um, yeah, they've, they've obviously got a lot of water here because it's green and, and the, the wicket looks like it's got a bit of grass on as well. So we are still two days out, so we'll have a look at that uh, in the morning of the, of the game and make certain decisions with regards to our lineup. Um, but yes, to answer your question, I think that the sun has played a, a role in, in probably flattening out the wickets and, and maybe towards the back end of the tour, you might, might see a bit of turn coming through.